Alright guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astral Auto Repairs. Can you dig it? <laughs> Alright, check it out. Today we got a 2005 uh, Chevy 2500 van. Customer's complaint is runs rough. Um, check engine light is on. The customer did do the spark plugs and the wires. But he still says it still feels kind of rough. The check engine light is on. So the first thing we need to do is hook up our Actron to find out what this code is and hopefully that will lead us to diagnosing it. Alright, so Billy Bob is going to get the Actron, he's going to hook it up and he's going to let us know what the code is and we're going to go from there. We'll be right back. Alright guys, girls, here we go. We got the Actron 9690. This is a bad machine, man. I mean, I can diagnose, I can out-diagnose pretty much everybody with this machine. <laughs> Alright, Billy Bob. Show them where the uh, diagnostic connector is. Up under the dashboard to the left of the steering column. All right, then. Can you, you, you see, see that? The light? No, they can see that thing. Right there. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is plug this up. All right, I'm going to put the key on. All right. Can you see the screen over here? I just want to see, you know, the finger work, so you know, show what you're doing with your finger, because you know you got a glare in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you see the screen, though? Yeah, I... Yeah, but if you can't see the screen, I can get inside here. And yeah, you, you might have to get in trouble. Man, I ain't doing no good. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to go vehicle diagnostics. Uh, auto ID. Above 2,000. Hit enter. Hit enter. Uh, 2005 Chevy Express 2500. This is the Chevy Express. Okay, is this correct? Yes, it is. All right, ABS, no ABS. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you. Yes, actually this does have ABS because I was up under the vehicle and I saw the ABS pump. So it does have ABS. Hit enter, hit enter. Okay, it's fast communication, I like that. Okay, the ABS, we got one code, ECM, we got three codes, and OBD, we got four codes. Dang it, what the heck? All right, we're gonna hit enter. So we do have a heated oxygen sensor. That's not gonna cause it too much to give that lean miss. It is confirmed. Random cylinder misfire, that will cause a problem. Ignition coil B, primary secondary circuit. Um, I think they had it running and they disconnected one of the coils. So, I'm not going to worry about that one yet. O2 sensor. O2 sensor. Random cylinder misfire. Ignition coil again. Anti-lock brake enable. Relay contact circuit. Alright, so the, guys, let's, let's start this up and see what we got here. Now... Actually, it's, it ain't running that bad. I mean, I feel. What, you, what about you, Billy? Why? What you feel? Yeah, I feel a, I feel a slight miss. A slight, it. yeah, but not like a misfire, actually. Yeah. All right, let's go to data stream. Not for a random anyway. Random, you feel that thing shaking like crazy. No, but this actually feels like a random. You know, if it was one cylinder misfire, they'd be like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. But this feels like a. See, it's like. When it dies down. Let's 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 see what we got here. Uh, fuel trim is at seven. Now our long-term fuel trim, that should be about zero. So it's letting me know right now. Now check this out, guys. If your long-term fuel trim should be about zero, the higher that number go, that's the computer trying to richen it up, trying to give it more gas. So that's automatically telling me right now that the car is the van is not getting enough gas the computer is able to compensate for it but it's just not enough now if it was below zero that means it's getting uh it's not getting enough air it's trying to lean it out so uh, old tools are switching uh, short term is negative one short term is good okay but our problem right there is the long term so i'm wondering now what we're going to do is we're going to get us a little can of a uh, carburetor clean or something 
And without having to take off this this cover, uh, without having to take off the cover, we're gonna spray with some carburetor cleaner. Be right back. All right, you guys, we are back. Um, Tim, we really can go ahead and pop the hood for me. That. Um, all right, basically, y'all. Hey, hey, let me get me out of here. Yeah, I know. Basically. Okay, uh. Hey, you want to take this over to the. Over no, but I might get you to do this do this as well. But you got to go to the front. Yeah, yeah I get know, to, but I'm going to. Get to the front. Get to the front of the van. I'm going to have to have man, you. Man, that big old sting in your face. I, then I, I, know, I, I bet you don't listen to me then. I know, but wait, 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 okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stick up in the head. All right, you guys. Um, What I'm going to do, I'm going to get some uh carburetor cleaner. I see you looking at me. And what I want to do, I want to have my long-term fuel trim. I'm going to spray the carburetor cleaner around any hoses, intake, throttle body, anything that produces air. And I want to see my long-term fuel trim, if it drops. If it drops, we know we have a vacuum leak. Now, I'm going around here. I want you to hold this trucker for me. And let me know if you see long-term drop. Mm -hmm. Do is now find. But you know, um, yeah, okay. I'm gonna, uh, um, all right, there's, there's enough, can there's, I don't want to wait. There's enough, uh, you got enough can in that can, a new can? Yeah, I should oh, have enough. Right. But, uh, I basically, uh, got a little bit weird, though. Uh, I know, I see. You know, you know, actually, actually, somebody, I think it's L, L, somebody, I think he was saying something, he said, you know, Basically, uh, Billy Bob was this, and, and basically, he was... <laughs> so, see, he loved me too, so, you know, hey, it'd be all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically get no, this man. done, though. <laughs> all right, what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up around the airfield. I'm gonna spray around the airfield first, and then pull that thing out, I'm gonna check it just to be sure. So, just spray it around. And make sure that thing don't float over there in your face. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, and by the way, you don't want to spray this too much around your exhaust. Boy, you ain't got to worry about this thing no more. <laughs> this <is> insurance money. <laughs> All right, well, he's spraying. I'm going to watch him. Uh... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Our long term jump right down to zero. But I'm not. Let me see if it goes back up. I'm not, I wasn't paying attention, so I don't know if it's because the car warmed, the van warmed up, or so what, or, or because you sprayed, I, I don't know. All right, what do you mean, let me get No, 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 hold it, hold it, it's still at zero, though. No, I think it's because it warmed up. I think it's because it's zero, but we still got a little, so, that ain't it. The vacuum leak is not it then. Okay. We got some other something else that's the issue. Okay. Well, now that we know we don't have a uh, vacuum leak, I guess we just move on to something different. Hmm. All right, uh, all right, so I guess it's my court now, huh? <laughs> all right, guys, let me, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give Billy Bob the camera. And let me give you a little insight of PO300 because that's a very difficult code to diagnose. So let me give him the camera and I'm going to explain this to you. Here you go. All right, now you're in my court, my, my, my ball field. All right, PO300, random cylinder misfire. That means you got a, you got a misfire that's affecting more than one cylinder. Now, usually if you got a bad set of wires, it can cause that. Uh, there gotta be a lot of bad wires or bad plugs. But the customer, and they already know, the customer already went ahead and changed the plugs and wires. <clears throat> so, what can make every cylinder 
be affected. It could be a leaking intake manifold. Now checking the fuel trims, we know that's good. Because that's at zero, that's at perfect where it need to be. So we know that's pretty good. The next thing we're gonna know is uh, it could be maybe it's not getting enough fuel. It could be a clogged fuel filter. It could be a worn out fuel pump. Now how you gonna know that? Now guys, you know I like to be, um, I like to do our channel for the do-it-yourselfers. And I don't like to really pull out any kind of high expensive, any kind of expensive diagnostic equipment because what I want you guys to do is be able to diagnose this with the hand stuff you have. And there is a tool out there. There's a $99 oscilloscope that you can use and get you a current probe to go with it. And it'll help you out a lot. So what I'm gonna do right now is what we're gonna do is call graphing the fuel pump. Even though the van is running, the fuel pump can still be bad. And this test is gonna show us how to do that. Now Billy Bob does know how to hook this up and I showed him how to do this. So what we gotta do is find the fuse to the fuel pump and we're gonna bypass that with a little tester and don't you know what instead of me speaking about it. You know how many years ago that was? What? I found a man forgot how to use that thing. Well man, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Right. We're gonna do this. And Alright, hold on, let me see, make sure. Yeah, we still at zero on the So uh Oh yeah, make sure let me know uh there also can be a clog breather. The clog, the clog, run like now, see a, a clog breather also that's a, see that's a good another good thing. Your clog uh, air filter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, punch you in your face. Anyway. <laughs> I should punch you in your forehead for yeah, saying that. Y'all yeah, gonna look up and I'm gonna have him in front of that truck right here. <laughs> oh, look at that, look at that. Check that one out. That thing will drive up on the road about 30 I months. know. All right, a clogged air filter, if the car's not getting enough air, it can also cause um, a random cylinder misfire. So I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna shut this cut shut the van off and Billy Bob is gonna check uh the air filter. Go ahead man, I'm gonna shut it off for you. Well well first I'm gonna uh snatch the fuse panel up at the same time that I'm doing this. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna right, as a matter of fact but, um yeah it should be down oh, yeah, man, pull it up. Hard to get to down there. Yeah, matter of fact, I wish you had a came with it to see that. Oh, oh you didn't tell me to come. You, yeah, you yell at me when I'm in your way. It, it just slipped my mind, man. It just slipped my mind. All right, guys. Also, what? Wait a minute. Man. I'm, we got to find out. We got to know which one is the I'm, fuse. I'm show them, okay, I'm okay. Show them that. Let me all right, this all, right, all right. You guys are. Uh, I was getting ready to say basically. Um, as you see, there are two 10 millimeter bolts there. So you really. Don't have to take those out, but if you feel comfortable and you really want to take it out to get it out of your way, you can. So what I'm gonna do, just put a little moss behind it and get it on out of there and slide my clamps back. I'm gonna pick up on it a little bit. And voila, comes right out. Now, let's take a look, see. Is that a king in? Yes it yeah. is. Yeah. That look kind of dirty. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it get a little kind of dirty. See, guys, now, you see all that dirt in there? This can give you a PO300 right off the bat. But, um, but we, now, yes. a good way of checking this out. Hold it to the light. Hold it up to the sun. And you can see, I can see, I can see a little sunlight in there. So it, it's still breathing. But what we're going to do, we're going to leave this out while we're doing this next test. All right, the next thing you want to do is... Yeah, here's a fuse box down here. Let me grab my fuse cover. Now what we're gonna what we need to do is find out which one of these fuses go to the fuel pump. Alright. Alright hey, you guys. That's bothering me. Okay. This is basically What do you mean basically? It's a cover. Man, I don't know. <laughs> this is how the cover came out. Just like this. So what you wanna do is once you get it out and you Got it looking at you the same way you took it out. Just flip it over. Everything should be in line. The same way you took this thing out. So we're gonna look for the fuel pump. Right there. Fuel pump, number 12. We're gonna find out where 12 is. Number 12 is right here. So, if 
you're doing this right, you will know. Because, I'm gonna pull out my fuse puller. Number 12, it'll be the second one, second row. If you do it wrong, you might be looking at the second one down here somewhere, you know that ain't it. This is number 20 fuse. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna get the Vantage and what we're gonna put in its place, and I'll be right back. All right, you guys. Uh, what I have here is a fuse bypass. So, all you have to do, connect it. And what this does is it helps um, test our fuel to make sure that the fuel pump is good. Now, man, hold it, wait a minute, man. You got the wire there to bypass the fuse so we can, you got the wires used so we can hook up the current probe. Yeah. There you go. There you go for it. All right, all right. Check go out, ahead, check out um, fuel. Do our fuel pump mean? Now, come on over here. See? Now you made me forget which one I took the fuse out of. Which one was it? Second one from the top. Second row, second one down. I know. I'm paying attention. Pay attention. That's right, man. I'm paying attention. All right. We're gonna flow that thing up just like that. Make sure it's nice and tight. If you uh, have this equipment, you want to make sure this wire is not leaning on anything else and it's straight. Yeah. All right, guys, now my turn. What, what, what? I'm going to go ahead and do it, you know, refresh my memory, you know. Now. All right, guys, here we go. We got the Vantage. Now, guys, the Vantage is a $2,500 machine. The current probe is $99. You can definitely go get you a current probe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get me the, the $99 oscilloscope so and I can use with the current probe. So you can guys get the same thing so you can check out the cars too instead of spending any money on this. So what I'm going to do, I'll walk you through and let you know what kind of waveform pattern you're going to be looking for. Alright, we're going to cut this, cut this machine on. <coughs> can you see the screen good? Uh, I'll, I'll work it out in a minute. I hate this man. Hmm. All right. Huh? Yep. All right. So what I'm gonna do is go over here to power user test. Um, you can go with help. I'm gonna go to current probe test. Select current probe. Pick the snap one. Even though this is not a snap on one, pick the snap on one. Current test. Okay, now we're gonna test the fuel pump. Now as the accumulator is turning the fuel pump, the more garbage in the fuel filter in the tank that puts a strain on that fuel pump, our accumulators get, the, the, the amp is amp draw is very high. So let's go to select test, current test. Now, let's see here, fuel pump, Current can be checked using lab scope, and I'm gonna that's like again. I'm gonna get you guys to have the $99 lab scope and all that, and a snap on current low amp current probe. All right, current probe connect current probe is shown. Blah blah blah. Current probe red lead, yeah, black lead, yeah. Uh, current probe, yeah, zero adjustment, yeah, blah blah blah. Hook it up to the positive side of the coil, that's where we eliminated the um, the pump. Now, humps that appear in waveform are normal and represent condition of pump accumulator and brushes. That's the kind of waveform we're looking for. All right, so when we start this up, we're gonna take our comp probe, we're gonna hook it up, we'll put it on 20 amps, press the button to zero it out, and we're gonna hook it up onto this wire right here on our tester. Okay, once you have that wire hooked up. And we're gonna start the, it up. And the car is <laughs> running. This should be what you get. If you have a, uh, if you have nothing to show, you wanna, you wanna take your um, current probe right. off. Uh, yeah, yeah. You wanna take your current probe off. As you see, my screen, nothing. But well, okay, show me what you're doing, though, man. Yeah, I'm on here. All right, now as you All see, right. we got nothing, guys. So what I gotta do here is take my current probe, disconnect it and turn it around. I'm gonna zero, zero right again, out. just again. Now I'm gonna hook it back up. 
Now, then we come over here and that definitely. Now that definitely don't look like. Now I want to bring this waveform pattern down. So what I'm gonna do is go down here and put it over to about 20 in. Bring it down so we can see it. Look at that waveform pattern we got, guys. Now let's see what I'm gonna do is go up here. Look at that pattern compared to those two. Move right out of the way you're not having oh, oh, okay, okay. There you go. Left pattern. And this is what you should be getting. So we already know this fuel pump is weak. Now, that does not necessarily mean that the fuel pump is bad. It just means it's very weak and it definitely will give you a random misfire because there's not enough fuel in the system. So I know right now this car needs a fuel pump and it needs a fuel filter. The number one reason your fuel pump, now fuel pump is supposed to go for years and years and years. And if you get in a pattern like this, evidently that's telling me that this thing's got a bad fuel filter. Or, if it doesn't, because some vehicles don't have a fuel filter, it has a bad strainer in the tank. Which means if you let your car run very low, a lot on gas, it's going to be picking up dirt. It's going to put a lot of strain on that fuel, fuel pump, and it's going to go. We got us a bad fuel pump. Simple. Look at that pattern, man. That thing is weak. That's almost flat line. You know, just like a person. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, let's see what it be like under the load, under the pressure. Uh, uh, well, it, it power, should. Power break the car. It should get worse. It should be even messier than what it is. By power breaking, you guys is putting a strain. Say what now? All right. Uh, one foot on the brake, one foot on the gas. You had to pass the show no change. All right. I'm, I'm you down. <coughs> well, you you got to save it. Hold on. That, that thing opened up like it was trying to go through a straight line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and look at the engine, guys. Look at that wind. Look at that this fire right there. It ain't running smooth at all. We definitely got us a fuel pump issue here. Alright, what, we, what we're going to do is let's disconnect our effort and then we shut it off. We'll show you, we're going to show you that this is the fuel pump one right here. So we're going to pull that loose while the car is running all right. and watch what happens. Now, I would not Pull your stuff out like this. You know, don't do that. Reach back down the same way you put it in. Put it out. Put it out. This thing's supposed to be cut off. It, 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 it takes too long. It's kind of no business. It's supposed to cut that off. Boom. There you go. That's that raggedy Chevy. Hey, hey, don't talk about the Chevy, man. Don't <laughs> never disrespect the Chevy. Now, as you see, Came from here. Took a right, while guys. for it to die, but it did. Okay, we're gonna put the fuse back in, put the air filter back in, and we'll be right back. All right, guys and girls, there you have it. That is the perfect diagnosing of a PO300. Now, here's the important part now. Guys, girls, if you're doing this for a customer or a family member, you it's, it's imperative that you show them this graph if you have that oscilloscope. Now, I'm definitely gonna get that cheap one and I'm gonna show you and so that way we can diagnose things together. Because the thing here is, we know 100% this thing's got a weak or failing fuel pump. So you have to be able to explain this to the customer and show them this. And once the job is complete, you gotta make sure you show them the waveform pattern. Again, complete different, right? You got to show them this. So in their mind, they know that's money well spent and you just, because guys and girls who you know them people who don't know they're going what they're going to say is nah nah it ain't your fuel pump people who don't know about this they're going to say nah it ain't the van is running ain't nothing wrong with your fuel pump but see they don't know so you got to show them this all right any kind of questions or comments be sure to put them in the comment section below or you can email me at tim at astroautorepairs.com i've been getting a lot of emails from you guys and i've definitely been responding i definitely like questions about automotive repair because what that does 
and that keeps me and Billy Bob on our toes. The more questions you ask, the more it keeps us on our toes. So, this is Timmy and Billy Bob from Astro Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, nobody can. Take it easy.